Good morning, everyone. Um, we've done loads of taping on tape with this ear crafter. I'm not really sure what's going to end up being videos and what's going to end up in what order, but I did very definitely want to talk to you about this Renogy 2000 watt inverter that I fitted aboard the crafter. What I've done is I've kind of put it together in an ad hoc way. Um, so you'll be very critical of my wiring and that's okay. Um, we put it together in an ad hoc way so that I can test it because I can't really find online the information about how it operates and I've discovered quite a lot about it um, in terms of how it, how, how it operates. So I thought I'd share that with you. So let me chat you through what we've got. Actually, we'll start at the back of the van because that'll make a lot more sense. At the back of the van here, I have the AC side of things. DC up front, AC back here. Uh, it's going to have a bit of a TLC on the paint, so I've not fitted a mains hookup point yet, but for simulation purposes, that is what will be on the outside of the van. That goes into an RCD and then uh, an MCB. Um, as well as, so what happens is when you hook up mains power, via this protective device, a double pole RCD, that's important. Uh, power is sent to a couple of different places. It's sent direct to this socket here that says uh, hot water. I don't see any problem at all with how that's wired. That's fine. That's uh, No, what we do, just because you'll be critical in the wiring, um, you wire something together and make sure that it's going to work the way that you hope it's going to work. I haven't been able to find in instructions the answer to my question, so I've needed to test stuff. And this is how you test it. And then, when you're happy, you pull it all apart and put it back together properly. So, this socket here that I'm holding is simulating um, sockets that will only become live when we're on mains hookup. Okay? So that one says hot watt. So that's for the hot water tank. There'll also be one that comes off the back of this for the battery charger, okay? As well as that, there's been a lot of sirens since they've been filming. Oh, by the way, um, Sean Bean's in town. Hmm. Uh, it's a Game of Thrones prequel and half the village has closed off as a result of it. Um, so that's probably something to do with that. We've had drones, people in period costume, all sorts of silly nonsense. Anyway, then it goes from this MCB to the inverter. Let's go have a look at that. You see here, that's a mains input. Those are the mains outputs, that's the input. One way that you can always tell whether something is an input or not, it's the same on the hookup cable and Pixie will drop in a, a B-roll shot here to, to prove that's the case. Things like the hookup point on the side of the van or things like that have got pins exposed, okay? Which means there's no power there because it'd be rather stupid if there was because you just stick your fingers on them and you get a shock. Whereas there, there's nothing, okay, you could jam something in there if you wanted to be an idiot. Um, but under normal circumstances, there's no way you can get a shock off that, even if it's live, because there's no exposed pins. So because that has exposed pins, we know it's an input, okay? So, sure power connection, RCD, MCB, and then into here, okay? It then goes out of here on this socket. I've used a black cable and a white cable. They're both three core um stranded cable what we call flex um you do see people using uh what you call t and e twin and earth solid core cables like you'd use in a dwelling a house an apartment building an office or whatever the solid core stuff wrong 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 it has to be flex and i've just used two different colors there to make life easy for myself so along this cable if this automatic transfer switch is working correctly, along the white cable that's plugged into here, you will have one of two things. You will either have the power that the Renogy inverter is creating itself from the DC batteries, okay? 
the the pos and neg hookup points on the are on the side here nice big beefy connections again we'll get some b-roll of that for you but um the, yeah so if the inverter's on and you're not on hookup power then what comes out of that socket is the power that this is making from battery power or if you're on hookup power the hookup power is going through that little box along here into here then out of here and onward to everything else that's mains powered on the, on the truck so that'll be sockets for as i've mentioned previously an air fryer a coffee machine as well as a, a laptop computer and half a, half a dozen other things um, that white cable makes its way into the back and then makes its way into a second RCD, okay? And the reason for that is to offer protection from power that is being generated by the inverter. So whether the electricity that you've got at your, at your plug socket is either from mains hookup or the inverter, either way, it's gone through an RCD off to the inverter and then potentially a second RCD, but that's not gonna do us any harm. And then into another MCB, it was a late night last night, uh, into MCB and then off, as I've said, to our sockets that are gonna do the laptop, air fryer, coffee machine, etc. So those there must be people saying, why on earth are you gonna send power to the inverter only to bring power back from the inverter but I need you to imagine a scenario for me let's say you've got a fridge full of beer and it's a mains powered fridge just for example and where you are situated your location there's um, intermittent power sometimes now uh, there'll be people who say well you know I only ever plug into a connection at a garage or a campsite or whatever but I've got half a dozen people who uh, I've got one instance for example where one client um, goes to uh, motocross events and the power can can you know be on it can be off someone might have disconnected something they might be swapping generators might be doing all sorts of other things but you want to keep your beer cold don't you that's of paramount importance so the advantage of taking the mains hookup power whether it comes from a generator, whether it comes from a main hookup point or whatever, into here and then out of here and off to your sockets, is because if you've got this in the on position, which is that one, yeah, if you've got it in the on position, then um, when there's mains power available, it, you'll be using mains power. If the mains power fails, the inverter will kick in instantly and then back again. So as you're hooking the van up to power and disconnecting it from power and so on and so forth, this will be um, determining the power at your sockets, whether it's coming from the inverter itself or whether it's being passed on from the electrical hookup point. We're gonna see that in action now because we're gonna test. Okay, so I've got my mains hookup connection that we talked about that would be on the side of the van. And then I've just got a temporary lead just to patch into it, just for test purposes. Um, as I've said, just so we can see this working. And this in front of me here is a socket, okay? And that's me test device. It's got two little lights on there that I don't know whether you can see or not. Yeah, yeah you can, yeah. So this, this socket here is a socket that will be live whether we were on inverter or whether we were on mains hookup power. So to test that theory, I'm gonna unplug, being very careful obviously because these are live now, this is not how to do it. And that one also is live. Okay. I'm gonna kill the shore power connection. Okay. Just by hitting the test button there. Right, so we've no longer got shore power. And, as predicted, that socket is now dead because it only comes to life when we're on shore power. But this socket here still works, albeit it shows up a no earth fault because that's correct. It's, we're not earthed in the, in the conventional way. 
um, but that socket is live it will it will work if I plug something electronic into there that will be functioning nicely okay and again I can prove that point I mean when you think about it logically that light for it to illuminate power's got to come from somewhere so it kind of proves that power's there but again if I click that off and isolate so that's the RCD from the inverter we've got no lights at all so that very definitely proves that it is the inverter that's powering that if I restore mains power it takes a moment but it will click over so I've got a single light at the moment And there we go. We've got a I clicking just heard, noise. I just heard the click. <laughs> so there we are. The, now, in this testing, there's something that I discovered that I thought was quite cool. So we'll cut to that now. So it was quite late last night when I was doing my testing. Um, so I'll, I'm going to do this and clarify it as I do it. But that's in the on position, right? So that inverter is inverting. You've seen that when we put mains hookup power on it, it makes a decision between whether we've got mains hookup power or whether we're inverting okay it does that job in the on position what does it do in the off position let's find out so we come to the plug sockets here the inverter is off so it is no great shock and surprise at all is it that there's no lights on here and, and effectively there's no power here because we've not got the inverter on and I've got mains power switched off, the mains hookup power switched off. When I turn the mains hookup power on, ah, it's on straight away, okay? Now, I'll tell you the reason why this is great news. So the inverter is off and yet the automatic transfer switch side of it, where it takes power in and passes it on to these sockets is still operational. The reason that is brilliant is because if there's a low state of charge on the batteries, okay, now there's permanently a low state of charge on this leisure battery because it's goosed, which means as soon as you put any any load on this at all, really, or any load on the inverter at all, it starts beeping like mad. If it's turned on and you put a load on it and it's inverting, it starts beeping, 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 beeping. And I thought this is going to be a blooming nightmare if for it to work as an automatic transfer switch, it has to be on because if it's on and your ledger battery is low, it's going to be squeaking at you constantly. But the brilliant news is that it can be off, as it is at the moment, and it still works as an auto transfer switch. So I am right dead chuffed with this. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to stand by it as it is at the moment in terms of how it operates. However, I've not yet tested it for things like capacity or efficiency or anything along those lines because <laughs> um, as soon as I put a load on it, uh, the battery falls over because the battery is goosed. So we're going to replace the ledger battery and then I'm going to do all that sort of testing. The, the truth is, from what I can find online as a resource, most people say that this is, you know, they've bought one, they've tested it, they've tried it out and it works perfectly. So uh, I don't think I'd be telling you anything there once I have tested that isn't already publicly available. But I had the devil's own job finding out how the transfer switch side of it worked and couldn't find it. So uh, what I'll do is I'll put this video out anyway, even though I haven't done things like a capacity test or a stress test on it or anything along those lines, which I will do. And I'll update you at a later date if it turns out that this 2000 watt inverter falls over if you put more than an 800 watt load on it or whatever. Okay, But for the time being, let's just say that we'll assume a certain amount about it because that other information is publicly available. And I'm filling in a blank here, hopefully for some people, in the respect of how the transfer switch works on this here inverter. And I believe it's the same on all of them the thousand the two thousand and the three thousand that have this facility uh, I'm, I'm i'm making the assumption that it works the same across all of them but i've only got the two thousand to play with so if you buy the thousand and it doesn't work how i've stated sorry <laughs> okay that concludes this then i suppose folks thanks oh 
last and final point whether you turn it on from here or on from the switch makes no difference in terms of operation it's the exact same so i'm well happy with this pit kit so far and i like its robustness so and i like the fact that it isn't this big because you do get 2000 watt and 5000 watt inverters that are this big and you just think well it's not is it but anyway well happy so thanks ever so much for watching cheerio goodbye